especially welcome everybody to this uh, program this morning. We pray that the Lord Almighty will bless all bountifully in the name of Jesus. Amen. We will reap the fruit of our labors in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will touch us at the point of our needs in the name of Jesus. Now uh, this morning we want to speak on the spirit of laziness. The spirit of laziness. That is what we want to consider this morning. Uh, just like the law of motion. The law of motion says that uh, any moving object will tend to move forever if it is not impaired, it will not be stopped, it is not stopped by any force. And any object that remains at rest will tend to remain at rest forever if there is no force that is uh, against it or hurting upon it. Uh, just like the law of motion, there are some people that are enthusiastic, they are hardworking. And whereas we have some people that are very, very lazy. They are very lazy in all aspects of their lives. And there are consequences to laziness. That is what we want to consider at this point. Laziness is a disease. It's a self-inflicted disease that is caused by one sin. And laziness uh, can uh, bring a lot of uh, negative things to, to one's life. If you are lazy, a lot of things will happen in your life that may not be palatable. A lot of things will be going around you that you may not like. You may not like your position. You may not like your like yourself, among your colleagues, among your friends, you'll be going down, going down the drain if you are busy. And uh, we need to speak to ourselves this morning. We need to brace up and then uh, take charge of our life and bring our life up and bring our life to, to be a shining star. Hallelujah. Laziness has become the lifestyle of many people. They are indulged in this business and become the life star. And the laziness is disobedience to God's instruction. Anybody that is lazy is not following God's instruction, not following the God's commandment. Uh, Proverbs 6, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. He told God, he said, Go to the heart, you sluggard. Consider our way and be wise. The Lord is using ants as an example of hardworking uh, animals, as hardworking creatures. They are hardworking, they provide their food in the dry season. And when it was ready, they were going to enjoy what they have stored for themselves. God is asking man to go and then observe them and learn from them. Praise the Lord. Uh, what are the characteristics of laziness? How do we identify lazy people? Number one, lazy people hate work. They hate work. They hate working. They hate, they are not like doing anything. They are just lazy. They are just sleeping. Just resting. They hate working, they hate doing anything. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 25, the Bible says, The sluggard craving will be dead. The sluggard craving will be dead of him because his hand refused to work. His hand refused to work. He lost me as a dog turns on its hinge. So it's not that turn on his bed. They always lock their bed. They don't rise up early. They sleep all days, leaving their job to the lion family. Hallelujah. Some people have a good job, but they are not hard working. They come late every day to the work. And when they, when they get to work, they don't do anything. They are just relaxing. Hallelujah. And if you are expecting more pay 
and they'll be expecting promotion. Hallelujah. And when those things uh, didn't come, they become bitter. They become aggressive. They hate people. They hate their boss when they are coming late, when they are not doing anything to help the, the organization to move forward. If you have lazy people in your place of work, the work will not move forward. If you are a private practitioner, if you are investor and you employ lazy people, the lazy people that are the ones that will destroy such business. Lazy people are kind of they are kind of out of business, they are kind of out of organization. Uh, don't employ lazy people, don't condone lazy people around you because they will destroy whatever you have built. Lazy people, they hate working, they hate work. Hallelujah. Number two, they always love pleasure. They love pleasure. They avoid hard work. They want to enjoy their life. Hallelujah. They want to enjoy power. They want to enjoy money. They love party. They love uh, going to parties, going to functions, at the expense of their work. Anything is, that is what they adopt. That is what they follow. They see people. Hallelujah. And uh, it's a self-inflicted disease, as I said. Uh, they are the one doing themselves. Number three, these people love to sleep. They love sleep. They love sleeping. They are not waking up early. Some people will wake up at 10, they don't wake up at 11. Hallelujah. And they leave their job value. They leave their, 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 their job. They are not going to, to their place of work to do anything. And then there are consequences of all those actions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The book of uh, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 9, say, How long will you lie there, O slugger? Why will you arise from your when will you arise from your sleep? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When will you arise from your sleep? The book of Proverbs and the same that at the uh, Lazy people like to sleep. Like to sleep around. Number four, lazy people they procrastinate. They postpone their actions. They don't act on whatever comes to their mind. They don't work as a friend do. They continue to postpone all the duties they're supposed to have performed. They put it, push it forward to a day, to a week, to a month, to a year. And as the year they're running out, they will not do anything. They will need to imagine it, they need to, to, to postpone all the good things they have to be done. Hallelujah. Let's be careful. Number five, they are always talkative and boastful. Lazy people, they talk a lot. They talk a lot, all they cannot do in one year. They will say they will do it in a day. They are always boastful. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Some of them are expecting big breakthrough without doing anything. They are expecting money, big money to come to their hand without anything. And they will spend this much money. Hallelujah. Imaginary, they will be spending such money. I have this video, praise the Lord. I know somebody that uh, says his plan is to be to bar. It's in Nigeria, praise the Lord. Yeah, I've never met the local government chairman of this uh, local government. He wanted to be to bar. And uh, when he tried to ask, he wanted to win billions of dollars and he come back to come and protest at the uh, government of, the, of his state. Praise the Lord. He's always talking, talking, talking. No action. Nothing to show. Praise the Lord. And always boastful. Amen. These are the characteristics of lazy people. They always want breakthrough when they are not doing anything. They always plan B when nothing is forthcoming. And 
they will tear for life and they will beg us. They will beg you people for money. This place is always begging to Haran. Hallelujah. God wants us to lay our heart on something. He wants us to act for ourselves. God has created you. He has given you hearts. He has given you legs. He has given you brain. Use your brain. Use your heart. Use your leg to do something for yourself. Don't be a dependent. Hallelujah. Bible says those who that are not work should not eat. Amen. Anybody that fails to walk, Bible says you should not eat. Hallelujah. So let's do something for ourselves. Let us use our brain. Let us use our hand. Let's use our leg to walk for ourselves. Amen. 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 Uh, one, uh, one of the richest persons in the world, Warren Buffet. When they were asking, when they intervened, that what is his regret in life? He said uh, he regretted that he didn't start investment early. That he started investing at the age of 12. Praise the Lord. He started at the age of 12. That if he had started at the age of 6, 7, we have been having more money than this time. How many 12 years ago among us is thinking about working and investing? 12 years ago. Even 40 years ago, 50 years old people, they are not talking about investing. They are not talking about working. People are waiting for others to, to, to work and they will eat from them. Praise the Lord. That's a, a bad syndrome. That's a bad attitude. Amen. Then how does listening start? How listening creep, creep into the heart of men today? Number one, listening is self-made. Self-made. That person does develop attitude, like a physical attitude, non-channel attitude. Praise the Lord. He doesn't want to labor, he just wants to eat and enjoy. Praise the Lord. It's self-made. So somebody can go develop that attitude. I don't want to walk. I don't want to do anything. You just depend on somebody. We have people like that among us today. And parents can also cause it. Parents can make their children lazy. It can come from parents. Parents there are so many parents that indulge their children. They do everything for that child, that for the child to be adult. They will not teach them how to ask good call, how to sweep, how to wash plates, how to lay bed, how to take care of themselves. They will do everything for them. When you are doing something for your child, you are spoiling that child. They will not get you to eat when you become adults and become very lazy. Amen. There are some people that it is us made that we are allowed to be doing everything in the home. And the children will not do anything. We are teaching them laziness. When they become independent, they will not be able to stand alone. They will not be able to do anything for themselves. And they become redundant. Hallelujah. Parents don't involve your children. Let them walk. Let them do as well. Send them on errands so that they can be useful for themselves in the future. Hallelujah. We are spoiling so many children and they cannot become good wives. They cannot become good mothers because when their mother becomes uh, taught them very well. They become bad wives. They become bad mother. They cannot do anything at home again. Praise the Lord. It's a bad attitude. So don't touch your children. Don't let them be lazy. Don't provide everything they need for them. When you provide everything they need for them, then they become independent of people. Praise the Lord. Let them solve their own problem at times. Let them struggle at times. Hallelujah. Let them struggle at times. Hallelujah. 
There's an energy that will be sent by somebody. Two people they were not in the garden. They were not in the garden, they have gardens. One was pouring water every day, was pouring water onto those plants. And both grew. And the time was done. The storm destroyed one garden. All the trees fell down. Praise the Lord. And the other one was still standing. And the person that his field was destroyed went to the other person. Why, why did you, did your own, it was not, it was not destroyed? He said that you provided every day you put water into your farm. Praise the Lord. You give them everything they wanted. But now I put little water there. So the roots have to go down to go and look for more water. So the root has gone down and then it becomes strong. But when you pour water in your own, the root does not go down. You are getting water at the surface. And that did not make it to have security. It was not firmly rooted on the ground. But when I use little water, they have to seek water for themselves and they go down. And that was why we were standing. So that is what is happening to all children that we spoil. That when they want 10,000, we give them 50,000. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are spoiling them. When they ask for one thing, we give them three. In the name that you have money, you are not helping them. Praise the Lord. You are not helping them. At the time, you have to tell them that there is no money. Amen. I cannot buy this thing for you. Let him learn. Let him think. Praise the Lord. So, parents are one of the causes of laziness. Then, husband and wife, they can also indulge themselves. The husband can indulge the wife. To the extent that the wife will be very lazy. The husband can employ three maids in the house. One will be washing, one will be cooking food, one will be starting an errand. In the day that the love is wife and he has money, he will employ driver for the wife. The wife will not do anything. Just to come home and eat. Praise the Lord. And then that, that lifestyle is not a good lifestyle. You cannot cook for your family, you are not a wife. You cannot cook, you cannot cook for your husband, you are not a wife. If somebody else is playing your role, and that person may eventually take away your husband. And likewise, wife can indulge husband. Hallelujah. Doing everything for husband can also be dangerous, can make the husband to be very, very lazy. Not want to do anything in the house, or not want to do anything for the family again. Let us check this thing very, very well. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. What are the consequences of laziness? Consequences of laziness. When you are lazy, there are so many things that can happen to you. Number one is failure. Failure. Anybody that places is bound to fail. Said to, uh, if you don't prepare well, you are preparing for failure. Academic failure is there. When you're a student, you don't go to class. When you're a student, you don't read. You don't read what you're supposed to read. You don't know what you're supposed to know. You are not supposed to pass. You cannot pass. Hallelujah. Failure and with such person that is lazy. Amen. Pastor Kui shared his experience while he was in school. So he was very, very lazy. He used to come uh, last in his class. Amen. He used to come last in his class. When they are even asking other people questions, they don't bother to ask the questions because they knew that they did not know the answer. Hallelujah. They don't bother to ask the questions because they knew that they would not have any answer to it. Then, but at the time, was about to write the, 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 the wife, <coughs> wife of those days, that it just changed. That's that should not continue like this. 
I have to change. I have started reading, started all the notes that there has not been copied before. I started copying all those notes. I started reading. And then it was a surprise to the old school that passed, passed very well. And said, then it has changed from business to hard working person. We can, change, we can change our field, we can change our positions. We can become leaders in our class, students. You can become leaders in your class. You can score A, where you are score, scoring F before. You can score A, it's a matter of discipline. It's a matter of scoring very hard. It's a matter of commitment. Whenever you commit, the Lord will support you. Hallelujah. We can have business failure if you are lazy as a business person. If you are lazy, you cannot go out to get information. If you are not going out to get information, to get ideas, to get all the things that you do about that business, you can fail in the business. Business means hard work people. It needs thinking. It needs courageous people. But if you are lazy, you are not likely to make it. Vocation, all the artisans, you need to be hard working. Amen. All the fashion designers, all the apprentices, praise the Lord. You need to be hard working. What you don't know, you must learn them. You have to learn, you have to increase your knowledge. You have to go for more training. Hallelujah. There are some people they are trained for past 25 years and what they learn at that time is see what they are showing. They are still showing like that. You may not get a job. Nobody will patronize you. You have to be modern. Praise the Lord. You have to learn new things that they are doing. You must be hard looking to avoid failure. Number two is poverty. Anybody that is lazy. Proverbs 10, verse 4 says, A slack heart causes poverty. A slack heart causes poverty. For the hand of the diligent makes rich. The diligent people say they will stand before kings. They are not going to stand before mere men. They are going to stand before kings. And great men. But if you are, if you are, if you slack, you can have poverty. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When you are in poverty, you are in need, you are in want. You can't buy anything for yourself, you cannot even eat. Praise the Lord. So we are looking today to avoid poverty. Those people that are lazy to experience famine. They will experience farming of so many things. Anything we are new there, they will not be able to buy clothes, they will not be able to buy shoes. They will be in want all days. Whatever their counterparts are doing, they cannot afford to do them when they are lazy. There will be no money for them, praise the Lord. And number four, they always suffer hunger. There is no food for them. There is no food for lazy, lazy men. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 4. A sluggard's appetite is never filled, but the, but the active of diligence are fully satisfied. For the desire of the diligent are fully satisfied. A struggle appetite is never filled, but the desire of the diligence are fully satisfied. Praise the Lord. Everybody that is lazy will not get food to eat. They will have to be beggars. They will not be beggars in the name of Jesus. I said, you're not going to be beggars in the name of Jesus. Number five, the sober spiritual problem. They have to have problems. They are always in bondage. They are always in bondage of, the, of, of Satan. When they are lazy, anybody that is lazy will not be able to pray. 
when we call for prayer, they are not going to be there. There are some people who fasted for 40 days uh, this year. No, some people did not show up. Neither did they fasted. Hallelujah. But they are busy. And then the devil will be tormenting them. The devil will put them under bondage. You must be uh, spiritually okay. You must be strong spiritually before you can overcome the power of darkness. Hallelujah. Like so I said, this thing cannot happen except with fasting and prayer. So if you are lazy spiritually, you are going to be lazy physically. You, must, you are going to be lazy physically if you are lazy spiritually. You will be up and doing. And that is the reason why some people that accepted the work of God after they have failed in their duty, they cannot succeed as a, as a spiritual father. When you fail in your place of work, when you fail in your education and you rush into the, into the work of God, you are not bound to succeed. Because the failure that changes you from that work, that push you to the work of God, will still be in you and you will not be able to survive. Hallelujah. You will not be able to survive every spiritual thing. The Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. What will the lazy people do to overcome laziness? Hallelujah. Number one, they have to refrain from idle people. Don't be friends with lazy people. Don't associate with lazy people. The book of Thessalonians, chapter 3, verse 6. Thessalonians, chapter 3, verse 6. He said, Now we command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that you receive from us. This is the Apostle Paul telling the Thessalonians to refrain from idle people, people that are jobless, people that are not hard working. Advising them to refrain from them. Praise the Lord. If you join yourself with lazy people, you will also be lazy. For all the things they will say will be discouraging you from doing anything, anything is stable for yourself. Don't join lazy people. Don't be afraid to lazy people. Number two, be courageous and be strong. Just like the Lord called Joshua, self be strong and be courageous because you are the one that is going to defy that man. You must encourage yourself. You must be strong. You must be determined to do things for yourself. You must be determined to move forward. You must be determined to succeed. When you are determined, the Lord will support you. When you are courageous, the Lord will be with you. When you are strong, the Lord will be with you. The Bible says they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as evil. Hallelujah. That is what the Lord wants us to do, to wait upon Him and be strong and be determined. Amen. I got to a point when we are going to the Canaan land. People are discouraged. People are crying that we cannot take that land. It was the land of giants. We cannot take it. They were crying. They, all the people in the camp are crying. But Joshua, praise the Lord, the Caleb, they decided that we can take the land. The land that belongs to us. We will defeat all the giants of the way. Praise the Lord. They encourage the congregation to take their, their, their land. Because God has been promised them. Hallelujah. Amen. Number three, we must be diligent in the service of the Lord. We must be diligent in the service of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, book of Corinthians, he said, Therefore, my beloved brother, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. 
Praise the Lord. Said it is steadfast, immovable, always abiding in the work of the Lord. When you are in the work of the Lord diligently, then if you transfer to your own work, you can able to stand in your own work. You can able to move your life forward. I'm encouraging every one of us today to change. We can be better. We can make it. It's only that we have to help ourselves. We have to think deeply that we will not be sleeping uselessly. We will not be lying value. We must do something for ourselves. No matter how small, if we are doing it in it, we are going to succeed. The Lord said we bless the work of our hearts. That what the Bible says, that we will bless the work of our hearts. So if we don't have any work, what will the Lord bless? There are some people that are not going to pray for blessing. They are supposed to pray for work. But they are praying for blessing. And then those prayers are not answered. Pray for work. Pray for ideas. Pray for knowledge to create job, to create work. When you have work that you are doing, the Lord starts blessing you through that work. There must be a channel. God has created everything He wanted to create. He is not working on nothing again. When the mother of Jesus Christ approached Him, that they lacked wine, they didn't have wine again. Jesus had to cry there, they let them go and put water into some containers. Hallelujah. He put water in those containers and he prayed on it and became wine. Hallelujah. When the woman ran to a prophet that he was told he was a debtor, that the debtor wanted to take her children away. The man of God said, what did you have? He said, she didn't have anything. He said, a jar of oil. He said, that is enough. Go and lock yourself up. And then begin to borrow many jars. And begin to pour that wall into empty ones. And will do so. And the, 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 the full one did not dry up. But it was acting on something that he has. God will not act on nothing again. He has given us everything for the service of this act. It is whatever you lay your hand upon that God will bless you on. If you get there right, you don't want to walk, you are a lazy person. If you cannot think and decide what for yourself, you are lazy mentally. Hallelujah. But God hates laziness. God cannot hate anybody. Cannot, cannot like anybody that is lazy. You must find something to him. You must find something to him, no matter how small. That's all is what God is going to promote. That's what is God is going to use to bless you. God doesn't like starting from big things, he likes starting from small things. He can create two billions of people at a time for them to, 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 um, to create one. From one we get two, from two we get three, four, and then we have this population on the surface of the heart today. Bible says, I will bless the work of your hand. Go and lay hand on something. Don't be bothering to people. Don't trouble people. Praise the Lord. Amen. Especially those people that have two hands, that have two legs, that have eyes, that have ears, you have everything. Amen. There are some that do not have all the things that are mentioned and they are happy themselves. I have seen people. The, 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 the uh, people that are disabled, that are walking, that are carrying clothes. Praise the Lord. They have bad legs, carrying clothes. Somebody that doesn't have hands and even hands, or using mouth to draw, to paint, to do things, and became a dependent on himself and became very rich. How much more all of us that are fit and encourage us to cast away the spirit of laziness and be hard working today. Let's try to our feet and let us pray. Let's cast away the spirit of laziness out of our life. Now, the just spirit of hatred, 
business and see the spirit of hard work. I want to be diligent. I want to be hard working. And the just spirit of listening, begin to pray, 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 begin to pray. Lord, and the just spirit of laziness, and just spirit of laziness, the spirit of ignorance. I reject it in the name of Jesus. In the spirit of hard work, let me be diligent in my work. Let me be courageous. Let me be courageous. I empower you to be courageous today. I want to share my work. I want to take my work to the next level. I want to be outstanding in my education. In the name of Jesus, I want to change my status. I want to change my position. In the name of Jesus, as you are confessing, the Lord will give you empower you. The Lord will begin to give you the grace. You can be better than this. You can be more than this. You can be blessed more than this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Heavenly Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, this morning. I serve that praise in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I cast the great spirit of laziness out of your life in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Spirit of laziness disappear in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Be courageous. Be empowered. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Receive inner strength. Yeah. Receive the power of God. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Receive courage. In the name of Jesus, Amen. may the Lord renew your strength. Amen. May the Lord empower you. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. spirit of sleep, I curse you. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you will rise and walk. Amen. You will move forward. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you are delivered. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. it is well with you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord heal you. May the Lord provide everything that He requests for you. In the name of Jesus, all your needs have been met in the name of Jesus. The Lord will put smile into your faces in the name of Jesus. Every parent in this congregation, as you are helping me, receive your child in the name of Jesus. Receive your child in the name of Jesus. If you are sick, I command sickness out of your body in the name of Jesus. Receive divine health. In the name of Jesus, you are set free from poverty. You are set free from poverty. In the name of Jesus, you are set free from failure. In the name of Jesus, and from today, who are succeed. 